everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art trip. And today I'm going to show you how you can paint this gorgeous wildflower landscape with sunset at home. Step by step, fully broken down, fully explained, every tool, every color mix, every technique, so that you can paint along. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He helps me bring you these amazing art lessons so that you can really see what I'm talking about. Because if you see it, you can duplicate it. Now. Another thing for you to realize is there's some extra resources for you. If you go to the website, there are traceables, there are mini books. Those are written down instructions that match these step-by-step -step chapters. This will be broken down into chapters where you will see the steps as we go so you don't get lost in the painting. There's so many resources to help you get through. You may or may not know this. This is part of a program called Acrylic April, which I do every year where we get together and we paint every day in the month of April from April 1st to April 30th. You don't have to do that if you just like this painting and you wanted to do it. That's completely okay. But if you have come back again on your daily art journey for Acrylic April, John and I want to just like send you love. You guys are brave. You're amazing. And we're so proud to be going through this journey with you. Nothing to do but get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me at this uh, rotating easel right now. So let's hop into today's project. I have an eight by eight surface. I have the wish or intention bloom where you are planted on it. Just to let you know where the placement is. I know you saw the materials, but I want to let you know where the placement is of the paint. This is the phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, quinacridone, regenta, Mars, um, cad red, dioxazine purple, cad yellow, phthalo green, burnt sienna, and titanium white. So that's where that is positioned. Um, we've got our little wish in here, and I think we're going to divide the top and bottom kind of evenly so let's um ooh, i'm gonna begin with this brush this is the number 16 hog that i'm using this it's just really the equivalent of the eight hog i've used before it's just about a half inch wide hog bristle brush i know you guys don't always love them hogs i've been getting that feedback i'm gonna go ahead and blend my little wishes out into the little universe and i'm going to start with believe it or not coming halfway across, even below the halfway point a little bit with some white paint. So I start with this white first. And then I'm gonna grab, oh, it's a smidge, such a smidge of the phthalo blue. And I'm gonna just, on the toe of the brush, go back and forth. And you can see where the paint is wet. It gives us sort of a nice diffused streaky kind of sky blend. Now that uh, that chalk pencil did you use? Mm -hmm. It won't. Will it affect the color? Will it make it purpley? Um, if it was very strong, it could. Um, but because I went through and kind of removed it first, it won't hit me too hard. Oh, I'm gonna make it a little bit more turquoise here as I come up, and you can see I'm blending these two areas together just by going over them while they're still wet. Let me go back and forth. Soft, 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 soft. Get that sky going. As I go up though, I'm going to want to get maybe a little of my ultramarine blue and my phthalo blue together. A little more water on my brush today. I'm just going across here. I want my sky to be darker at the top. And it give us that sense of day. Even though I'm going to be putting a lot of clouds on here and everything, there's no point in not having that wonderful sense of day. Nope, got a little bit of a fuzzy there. Sometimes you have to clear the fuzzies off your canvas. And I'm going to come here and just kind of blend through. Uh, there, I feel like it gave me kind of a rough edge. So what I'll do is I will wash out. And just very lightly, without lifting the paint, kind of blend that little rough spot. So my brush is barely damp and the paint is still wet enough to do a blending technique into. And that's why I'm getting away with that. If you're like, how are you getting away with that? That's how I'm getting away with it. All right. And I'm going to bring a little bit more kind of white blended in up here. And that's because uh, my light source is right here. 
behind the mountain perhaps a little bit but that's where it is so i want to lighten that part of the sky all right let's call that wonderful gradation gradations can be hard right mm -hmm. so take a minute with that if it goes uh if the paint dries on you too quick or you're getting stripes dry and just start again uh, the layers won't hurt you and sometimes they even make your painting better so uh, don't don't lament on stripes you can you can do the blend just remember the paint blends when it's still wet all right let's come back on step two well that was pretty exciting you know blend and paint uh, let's take a little if you have a beverage whatever your beverage is i have coffee as always for seven years yep. on youtube and i've been sipping along here in the background the entire time it's weird that coffee relaxes me but it does mm. it's okay to take a minute and just think about your painting definitely uh you know mull it over muller it's been an american thing to drink coffee and relax it's something yeah no it's a uh, since the british we're like, we're tea. Coffees went, Americans went, no, we're coffee now. That was the I'm thing. cool with the British. Just oh, we're so cool y'all know. This was like way, be <laughs> like way before we were alive. This I wasn't history. there. We weren't there. We're just now in the, we live in coffee land. So we got coffee. If you, uh, and I have many friends in England. But but Scotland. actually that, that started the, the uh, uh, golden kind of revolution in England was the coffee shops. Because that's, that's, that's where everybody got together and like talked. Philosophy. See, look at us. We're all t drinking coffee and talking, talking philosophical like artists. Like you do. All right. So we have some distant little mountains we want to hide in here. And we have some more little variants in the sky and clouds that we're going to get going. I'm going to start back again with my hog brush here. You don't have to use a hog. Many of you give me feedback. You're like, I don't like a hog. Guess what? It's okay. You don't have to use it. They Not make for many any reason. synthetic brushes. I'm going to take a little of my cad yellow to my cad red. And then I'm going to get some white over here. And it's going to make a peach. That's peachy. Or orange and white makes peach. I'm going to come here. That's Wait, wait, say that again. Because that's kind of important to know. Orange and white Because I peach. always was wondering how to get to peach. Really? Yeah. It's like I wasn't sure if it was like a pink, eh, like a magenta and orange or like. Orange and white make peach. Peach. Ah, see, that helps. Red and white make pink, and orange and white make peach. I'm going to just come here and kind of, what we're doing is we're just implying some very distant little mountainscapes that you might have. I'm going to get a little bit of my purple and burnt sienna together. Oh, look at that. And let's uh, blend in a little bit of a Other next little row of distant mountain. Hmm. They're sneaky this way. They really are, actually. <laughs> They're sneaky. So when things are far away, they tend to be desaturated and uh, kind of grayed out. And that's why you get these effects in your mountains when they're far, far away. This is, when you're from the southwest, you know that, like, you're like, finally, I get over the mountain. No, oh, no, there's another sneaky one. <laughs> there's another one. It's and just... the one that's closest is uh, darker. Mm -hmm. I'm just using my brush. If your brush isn't giving you good control here, you don't have to use this brush. That's not required. It's hard to represent in a I'm painting. Brushing back kind of directionally. So we've just got some, look at this, we have some layers that, that direction really helps make it look mountainy. It makes it look a little mountainy. And I know I've got my kind of little green guy afoot here coming up. Um, I don't want to put him in yet. I don't want to do it yet. But he'll be coming like along this way. So yeah. that's how we're going to make that layering. However, we've got a lot going on in the sky. I want to come back in again with a little bit of my white and yellow. And blue, so it's almost like the lightest turquoise you can imagine. The lightest green, yellow, turquoise you can imagine. And I'm going to be brushing this in Wait. with a little curve stroke. Yes? Green, yellow to make turquoise? Yeah. Yeah, green and yellow. 
uh, well, turquoise is a blue green. Okay. Right. Um, and green comes from yellow. So when you want to change your turquoise up or down, thank you for catching me on that. When you want to change your turquoise up or down, you would add more yellow or more blue to the base mix. Thalo blue is kind of baseline already a turquoise. It's not the most turquoise it could be, but it's pretty turquoise. So it's a good place to start. Ah. I am curving the line here. This gives some motion to the sky, if you guys can see. I can see. I want to rinse that out. Rinse, rinse, rinse. And I want to kind of come in again. White. I'm going to come up over this. Giving that little space a bit light. It's okay to maybe get some of this. Uh, let's add some quinacridone magenta to our uh, peach that we had. And I'm going to turn, I'm turning to kind of give myself a nice angle. Let's blend in just a very light, transparent pink there. And it's just barely there. These are light effects. Very, very light. Come back in with some white. I really like uh, this color right here. Like very much on the palette. And we'll get to see a bunch of it in the sky. Let's bring a little of it over here. Let me get a little more yellow. Okay. That was a bit of a thing. Well, let's call that a step. Because if you haven't built a sky like this before and you haven't done an acrylic April with uh -huh. me before, um, it might seem challenging. Or if you just kind of came into this because it's labeled under uh, a beginner space and it is a beginner class. But remember, beginners come in stages. There's never having painted before. That's one stage of beginner. And there is, you know, I'm still needing some guidance through more complex concepts beginners. So keep in mind that there's different levels of beginner. And your beginner level is absolutely perfect. And you're perfect just the way you are. But I'm going to break it down into a smaller step just in case you're towards the earlier beginner. Sound Seems good? good. Yeah. Okay. When we come back, we're going to add some more clouds and sky to it. <sighs> gotta be the cloud in the sky. We gotta be the cloud. You wanna be the you wanna be the cloud in the sky. Mm. First thing I wanna do though is there's a beautiful depth that's up top, and I'm gonna take my ultramarine blue and my docks purple and kind of almost glaze. Uh, and what I mean by glaze is that it, it's very little. My brush is damp, it's not dry. But there's very little paint on it, and I'm just kind of going over it. Oh, yeah. With a depth of color, so that e up here, it's even richer. See how we're making it even richer? And maybe we come over that way and kind of give some depth. And I can even bring a little white into that mix. And I'm just brushing back and forth, following a kind of flow across the sky. That's what I'm doing, flow across the sky, brushing back and forth on the toe of my brush. Just adding those little layers, those little bits in. Mm -hmm. Now let's rinse this out. We could do everything with this, but I'm going to switch to a round because I want to make rounder shapes. So this is the same material. Um, this can be a frustrating brush if you're a beginner. So if you want to use just a synthetic round, that's okay. It's always okay. And, you know, I have oh, access to a lot of tools so I can find, like, the best brushes that give me a great experience. And, you know, things are not universally accessible everywhere. So you might be having trouble finding some stuff. I am going to take a little of that oh, cad red and magenta again that we like so much. Let's come here on the toe of this brush. Let's make a weird little wispity cloud. And come up here. I love doing these. It's super fun for me. Clouds like this are 
dark at the top and light at the bottom, but we're viewing the bottom. So when you're painting them, the big thing to remember is that you have to have both depth and highlights for them to appear to be what they are. And then as they get closer to the light source, you're going to have lighter and lighter aspects of them. Ah. I can take, believe it or not, my CAD red even and my dock's purple and create some very deep, dark dramas. You can be dramatic. You can do it. Now I might come here. I'm going to stay up here in the dark area of the sky. And I'm making irregular shapes because clouds tend to be that. I want to leave some room for maybe a little turquoise. Come through. And I'm thinking about the way the clouds flow through the sky. That wiggle, 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 wiggle. You can't underestimate the wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I get a little bit of my dock's purple into this, maybe a little more magenta. Mm. Let's add some white to it. See, that's an interesting little kind of dark cloud that we're going to start building up. You need to add a little more water. You can. You just got to control it where you don't have so much that you don't have control over the brush. As I come towards that center, I definitely want to lighten. And I'm going to make sure that I've got a little bit of light cloud right there. I'm going to get playful and come right here. Now here, I'm going to get more into that pink and red. And I'm going to make a little cluster right here in the center. Wiggling this back and forth. Making these weird shapes, and that's another reason that we like to break this down, um, especially with the mini books, is so that you can really look at what it is. Because if you haven't broken down a sky in your mind in a minute, it might be a little hard to visualize at first, but you can do it. Come back here to this kind of like purple and I'm like add a bit of that to this cloud here just to be like, oh, you're so dramatic. Very dramatic. So dramatic. Becky the cloud. Got a little little dark drama here. So see, we're starting to get that patterning, that weather pattern going. That's how we get these dramas. Get the dramas. So nice. So nice. Now, I don't really want to dry this. I'm going to call this a step, and we're going to come back and finish out the sky with the highlights. Let's get the drama going in the sky. So I'm going to take a little bit of my white here and I'm going to go ahead and just tip it with a smidge of yellow and I'm going to make some very dramatic kind of yellow white clouds here where my light focus would be. Look at that there. I do these a lot. I feel like I, I really like kind of um, have over my years on YouTube become like the sky sunset person. Mm-hmm. Where I get these in. I, I get known for eyes and things like that, but I really feel like I've got a very special thing to offer with this. Yeah, I agree. Because we really break it down. You know, and that is important. You got to have it broken down. Okay. Now, as we go out, let's get into our magenta. I'm going to maybe pull a little yellow into that magenta. What? I know. It's so exciting. But remember, we talked about the underside of these clouds are 
where the light is reflected. Mm -hmm. So I'm making little moments. Maybe get a little more yellow here. Look at that, just playing with my mind. So lovely. Can even get my little red in there. The cad red in that mix, you cannot underestimate. Mm. See, we're just creating these little underside highlights. Pulling those in. See, I get into the yellow and orange sometimes. I just want to pick it up. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, this is my brush. <laughs> it got it's back a good up. place to store them. I was going for the magic school bus today. <laughs> my look. I think you got it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I did too. I'm going to get a little more magenta into that. Look at us go, making that sky. Mm -hmm. and this one's a little bit redder. I definitely want to knock that one back. Deeper, it's further away from the light source. And you want to think about that, how the distance from the light source impacts the highlights on the cloud. And that's happening here. Not as, not as brightly. Be there. Oh, you know what I'm actually gonna do? I'm gonna do something like wild. I'm gonna get into my cad red and yellow. <laughs> Look at that pop up on the sky. And our last little touch, I'm going to rinse out. It's a pretty cool sky as it is. Like, you would stop and notice the sunset if you were going by mm -hmm. this vista. Just working that. Popping that little bit of bright color. Just makes it amazing, right? Mm hmm Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. That tells a very, like, morning glory story that I'm into, and I like it very much. We'll call that a step. Let's throw in this mountainscape. I don't know. I'm that ready. That was weird. I think it's cool. <laughs> Awkward art teaching. 
So I'm going to take a little of, I've got my, um, this is a number eight filbert. You could use my cat's tongue if you have that brush. You can use a filbert. It's really just about having a brush that's a little bit curved, but also gives you a nice edge. And I'm going to mix a little of my green and burnt sienna and a little uh, ultramarine blue. I'm going to come here and say, Oh, mountain go down. Mm. Kind of fun. Yep. A little point into it if I need to. And I do curve it over like in a slope. I do. I'm going to get a little of my burnt sienna now and my phthalo green just proper. We're going to come over here and say, oh, but there's more going on. We have a sister mountain. Mm. Ah. And this is much darker than our lightest color on the mountain, but we're just starting to get in those values, right? We're laying yeah. them in. We will work some of it out later, bringing that back. So they're tucked. You can kind of see those, those hills are coming in. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to paint everything, initially, the mix of these two colors. And that's because I just need a certain amount of... Um, Depth of paint. Oh, yeah. Just get that sort of complexity of color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want that depth. I've got it. I know it. I can handle it. So this is flowers and this is landscape. So we're topically still there. Right? Flowers are the most, second most popular subject to paint. Mm -hmm. I've already painted the first most popular. <laughs> Cats. <laughs> Yeah, cats are the most searched. <laughs> I probably should have a whole series on cats. Because cats are the how to paint my cat and how to paint my dog. But I do have a how to paint my dog. But how to paint my cat is... That yeah. sounds like bathing a cat. Painful. <laughs> no, not at all. I'm not really... I am kind of paying attention to directionality. Just a smidge. I will be coming back, believe it or not, across because there's this sort of like back little mountain that comes back. But right now I'm going to just get this color in and dry it. Mm. Can't do anything else. So this is on and thoroughly dry. So let's do that and come back and then I'll show you what you do next. So I'm going to keep painting this in. This mountain, though, is brighter than this color here. So when I bring over my burnt sienna to my phthalo green, I'm going to want to add a little bit of some cat yellow to it. I'm going to come here and start to capture mm. some of that brighter value that we might have going on over here at the edge. Our little edge space, right? Got a little edge space. Now, we've got a lot more uh, light coming through. I'm going to add a little more yellow and a little more burnt sienna. We're going to have that kind of here. Sort of implied coming down. See how we've sort of highlighted that? Yeah. I can even come in and get a little red and a lot of yellow and a little bit of green. Maybe pick some up here. A few places where the light is capturing the tops of little mounds or hills or things. Notice that I'm just wiggling the brush yeah. kind of back and forth. Rinse a bit. It just takes shape, right? Yeah. Um, I'd still like another layer of depth. So I'm going to actually bring my phthalo green and glaze the front. 
and that creates a richer base, right? Right over that dark uh, color I already have. I know I'm going to have lots, so many, so many little bits of interesting everything going on there. Let's get a little more yellow into the mix. I like to uh, lighten first with my yellow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring a little back and forth. Working just to show that it's capturing that. And you're looking for those little spots. Maybe a little more brown into that. We've got depth and highlight, right? Mm -hmm. Let's bring a little highlight here. It's fun to play with the green first. Let me get a little more brown into this mix and kind of come forward. And then weirdly, I'm going to mix some magenta in there. And it's going to make the strangest color. It'll make sense in a little bit. Oh, that's really pretty. I'm going to put some of that out there. I'm just lightly touching it, noticing I'm, I'm weaving it together. I'm using the angle of my brush stroke, pulling it down or in a curve to kind of show the slope of something. Now I want to rinse out. And before I do another thing, I want this to be completely dry and clean water. You guys still with me? Take a deep breath. The flowers in you. You got this. Just take a deep breath. Just break it down into the steps. This is a great sky. It's oh, a man. Fun sky. And then when we get the flowers on here, it's going to be just a beautiful painting. I think. I hope it's a popular one. Um, we had a, we had another one kind of similar to this uh, last acrylic April that was very popular, and I, I really enjoyed it, and I hope this one gets there. I'm going to take my quinacridone magenta and a little of my cad red. And I'm going to highlight some of these distant flowers. I'm just using the edge of the brush. Thinking about how they are. Mm -hmm. You don't see the individual blooms. You know, you see the shape of the growth on the ground. And that's important to track. It's a little brighter back here into my purple and kind of. Work that here. So I'm letting that grow. Mm -hmm. Where does it grow? What little field has it? I'm just coming here. Pick little highlights. Little tops of mounds. Loving it. This looks so nice. It really does. A little white in there. Up and kind of up and down.
wiggling in that layer. And that's why we had to dry it and get the uh, kind of uh, some of the green. Mm -hmm. Because if the green got into the pink, it would just absolutely grayed out. And you wouldn't feel pink in any way, which is great when we wanted it. But when we're trying to create something that's maybe a little more bright and vibrant, you know, you don't. I want to just make sure that the mountain feels like it's like, oh, I'm full of flowers. Right. So it's like the sunset and the flowers reflect each other a bit. Maybe a little dark purple over here. Okay. There, that's sort of like mid range. That's looking pretty decent, right? Really nice. And you can always come back and get a little of your yellow green in there. Okay, just talk about that a bit. Even up the hill. Getting a little bit of light. Now in this case, muting out the green into that purple is working in our favor, right? Because what we want is the green to be less saturated and those other colors to jump forward. Rinse out thoroughly, dry this sucker, and let's come back and we're gonna do the next layer. So I wanna get back into my cloud brush kind of space. So maybe I'll get the round back out just because it's gonna give me nice little kind of thick moments. And now I'm gonna go into my um, Diox purple and my Quin Magenta and also my Ultramarine and my Quin Magenta. They're slightly different values of purple and I wanna start just playing with that. So I'm gonna add a little white to this. This was the Dioxazine purple and Quin Magenta. And I'm going to begin to make mounds. Mm. You know, these are, oops. hopefully we can kind of see it even in the dark there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, start to put in the purple. So, that purple and green kind of playing against each other. Let's get a little more white into it. I'm going to pull it into some of the flowers that I have out here. Right, so they're integrated. Mm 
I'm just tabbing this up and down. Mm -hmm. I want this to be a very clustered little mound of flowers. So on flowers, right, like when you have fields like this, you know, you can't paint the individuals as much as you would in like a floral study. You're still paying attention to the shape of the blooms. You're still doing some of that stuff. But you also have to look at their community, how they relate to each other. The way they might fill in a field. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see that little space going. Let's come over here and we're going to, I'm kind of, kind of turn just so I have a, a nice mm -hmm. directionality. Mm And I want to definitely be able to weave in the green. And you can see that we're starting to do that. We're weaving these clusters into the green. I press this down. It's kind of like more smaller little groupings. Mm -hmm. Rinse this out. And I'm going to take a little of my phthalo green, my burnt sienna, and my bad yellow. I'm going to add some of those little pops of green. Little pops of green. Little wandering compositions. See how we're just wandering those little green compositions? Mm-hmm. This green is actually closer to, so normally we think of the complement of purple as yellow, but dioxazine's true complement is like a, 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 like a lime green, like a chartreuse. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you do this, getting into those bright yellow greens, you're actually playing in this color's complements, creating tons more drama. Just important to create these arrangements in a way that feels naturalistic. And authentic. That can be a little hard to get. Rinsing out a bit. I might come back into my deep green, my phthalo green. Kind of blend here. Make sure that your uh, hog brush isn't too wet when you do this part. Come back with a little bit of deep green just to make sure it looks good. Looks really good. I can do that. And say I'll apply like the toe and just work an edge mm -hmm. and rinse that out and then you know what we need another highlight but let's make that its own layer let's put this last little bit on its own layer so if you guys are following along it doesn't get too too uh stacked with information right in each segment that we can pause see what it's about come back to it and accomplish it take a deep breath you got this 
Hmm. When we come back, we're going to make all the flowers bloom, 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 bloom. We've got these beautiful purple magenta kind of flowers here, and I want to get them a little more white into the color mix here. So I'm going over to the magenta and I'm adding a little white. If you want a little more into the purple, you just get the ultramarine blue in there. See? Yeah. And that's a little different than the Diox. Diox is a great place to start. But this is where we're going to create a little drama. I'm going to just capture little highlights of those flowers. Look at them go. Yeah. Just on the toe. It's just on the toe of that. And you can see, look, my brush is all blown out. Your brush is blown out. It's just hogs. They wear out. They blow out. They're a hot mess. I used to just hate them mm. as an acrylic painter until I learned to manage my water. And then I was like, oh, these, these hot little messes are the jam. <laughs> That's cool. But it took a long time to get there. It wasn't it wasn't a relationship I fell into easily. Mm -hmm. And I always vacillate for a long time. I'm just tapping this around the highlights and I'm making these shapes irregular so that you know, we can see really truly see the tops of the flowers. Um, I always kind of like vacillate between the, if something is making my art life easier, but I know that it has a learning curve, do I introduce it to you or not? And I have finally come to the place that if it's significantly bringing me joy, I morally have to share it. If I could go through the learning curve and get to a relationship with my hog brushes, you can go through the curve. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it too. I'm just adding those little little elements. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love this little dawn. I guess it's dusk, maybe. It's really pretty. Given the colors, it's probably dusk or sunset. Dawn's usually softer. I've got one um, that for sure is dawn because the sky is just so soft and so light. We just take our time, right? Let's just get through these flowers. You know, we have some of these that we whip through very quickly, and then some of these we slow down and, like, pay attention to where we put the little dots. This is just to slow down and pay a little bit of attention on where you... Put your little highlights. Yeah. Yeah, you can take a minute and think about it. Sometimes I get really into the magenta here. You just want to This is a real place in the world. Or inspired by, you know, you don't want to, you have uh, references, but you don't want to like just copy your references, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, in this, hopefully we're looking at these references on, this is how that flower is built. This is how that looks, right? But we're kind of creating our own um, interpretation of those moments. But it is a real place. So imagine being here in this real place. You could be here.
and get back kind of over into that coral and magenta sort of crazy mix we had going. And the reason is, is that, you know, we might want to We can get it just nailed in, just dialed in. Got a little light. Okay, from that sunlight coming down. That's what we're adding here is that little bit of light. And that sunlight coming down. Not to everything. That's a little more in shadow over here. But this little corridor, look at it. See, it's got a little bit of light. Knowing to add that bit of highlight. That's a big part of uh, getting a little more drama in your floral landscapes. Get your wildflower landscapes really like popping. And, and it's just a touch, you know, it's not, it's not everything, everything, everything. Guess what, guys? We finished. Wow. I know. And it's beautiful. It would be beautiful big. You can do the study small and then be like, you know, I need this uh, 60 by 60 on my wall in a big square. That'll work. You can do that. So you just give them a little sign. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a signature, yeah, like we do. I'm going to get into my chartreuse on a number one monogram liner. Yeah, a little signature. Nothing too taken over the whole painting because I worked really hard to get here. I worked very, very hard to get here. And, you know, I'm going to make sure I've got it together. All right. Take a deep breath. Pat yourself on the back. If you came in for this one painting, I hope you love your result. I have literally thousands of art lessons on this YouTube channel and all over the internet everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, for on on everything um if you're here for this year's 2022 acrylic april i just really want to say thank you for hanging in thank you for believing in yourself it is a journey doing a daily painting or painting every day wherever you're at in this journey um it makes a huge difference in your growth as an artist and you finding your voice i have seen so many artists just discover themselves and 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 you know it's not about you painting like me. It's about you finding yourself in the art. So remember, it's each individual painting. Some of them you're going to love. Some of them you're going to be frustrated with. But it's about the collection. It's about the whole. If you're having a hard time, reach out in group and uh, talk to. We have fourth fourth years. We're mm -hmm. like Harry Potter up in this mug. Yeah, I know. We, we have fourth years. Um, who are there we even have prefects i'm telling you in that group we have some people who have been through it and they will have been where you are right now if you reach out not only might you hear from me but you might hear from two three hundred of the nicest people you'd ever hope to meet so go ahead and reach out if you need that encouragement i am super proud of you just seriously johnny proud of them super proud man we're doing it we're doing it <laughs> be good to yourselves be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.